Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And this week, those glue stick munching troglodytes behind Carmageddon reincarnation have some big news. Whatever could it be? Question mark, he said. Um, and did Steam just get a real competitor? I, you know what? I think Steam might have just got a real competitor. This week, Jordan learns that tempting fate is usually a bad idea for the 17th time, and Dragon Balls on my Linux? Well, kind of. Fluid and Jibipo flips the switch, and he also decided to quit Patreon. And yet another kickstarted game pushes Linux back. Will this ever stop? No, it will never stop. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux on all ends. It is quite brilliant. Joined every man, um, every man, giggity. Um, <laughs> every man, yes. <laughs> just, just the thought of his um, audio ducking ass this week, for whatever reason, we'll troubleshoot that later. Is one master swing from Toronto and uh, Space Britannia, the man from the island. He went back. Uh, one Pedro oh, Mateus. Yes. <laughs> Together with Shed Room Dynamic, I went look back at that and, lovely oh, oh God, face. Oh God, no! Why? Why is that there? <laughs> Nothing is for him. The last little, most special bit known is Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life organs, gentlemen. Um, I got a used piece of kit. I'm surprised it worked because it was in fair condition. Got a good price. It's in our audio chain. I build a thing. Um, my back's really sore, and I'm filled with seething rage for anything audio and/or noodle. What's up, Pedro? Well, over here, I too am cooking myself some uh, pain that mm -hmm. will be to come at some point after I get all the necessary noodles and adapters to wire things through this and then back to the PC. It's got USB support, which is nice. So, yeah. <laughs> Should be cool. What's up, Jordan? Oh, not much. Apparently, I have auto audio ducking issues that just appeared this week. It's always good times. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I keep hitting my knee in the same place. That, that's that's my that's my crazy update for this week. I don't know, um, man. Very, that, that, it, you were mentioning that during the pre-show, and that that genuinely sounds like a self-correcting problem at some point. You know, at so, at some point. I mean, the the first time was was because of an icy patch of road. Second time was because of desk. Third time, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, uh. I guess we got the one thing that we are uh, going to kick in the knee. We, well, hell, man, we absolutely do kneecap it every single week, and that is the horse. I mean, we 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 kneecap it, we skull fuck it, we do many things with many many appendages. It's the Steam Linux update. update. Bring it to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit weird. Uh, so it's uh, another CMOS update. You guys talked about this while I was gone. Apparently there was an update last week. But uh, this week is an update for the update because in the previous beta, uh, there were a couple of upgrade problems. And now they have also upgraded the kernel to the latest 4.14.13. Linus, come on. We need that 4.15 or 5.0 because this is getting ridiculous. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they also uh, upgraded. I mean, the, they, they got to fix the NVIDIA driver problems first. I, actually, actually, this yeah. re this release was caused by a bunch of blob driver issues, apparently with FGLRX mm -hmm. on some of the older AMD cards, and with the latest NVIDIA blob, people were uh, running in some boot loops. So uh, maybe 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 Steam Moss needs to go through a bit of the the chair QA session. Maybe, maybe see if we can break it and make it you know stable. I don't know, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I've really wanted to. When SteamOS first came out, it's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to have a dedicated box, man. I might even run as my primary operating system. They they convinced me not to do that real quick when it nuked a drive <laughs> when I first installed it. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm glad it I'm glad it's getting updated, but I, I just don't see much much to it because I mean. Unless you're building a dedicated Steam box, it's kind of it's like it's just run it on something better and more up to date. I, I can't yeah, see the big advantage. It's a console style operating system. That's, uh, I'm guessing that was Valve's entire plan with the big picture mode all along. Have a dedicated box, except they forgot to market it, which is why the Steam machines, well, they've fallen into oblivion. Mm. Also, the lack of hardware subsidization. 
and you know pay that too? Pe- people don't want to pay like a thousand bucks for a decent <laughs> console they'd rather pay like 300 bucks for a mediocre console but speaking of steam and selling things and buying things there's there's this hey man uh robot cash it's a thing uh we're talking about vg well it's from vg 24 7 that's gonna allow you to sell back your unwanted games for cryptocurrencies no not ones that are actually able to be converted into other goods and services a bullshit proprietary one and uh hey man uh why does it first why does everything need to be crypto something in 2018 but i do like their idea of you know drm free based blockchain system and all this fun stuff and they they want to make their own store that's cool but do you think this would actually be legitimate competition for Steam if it took? Is that enough incentive or? Eh, no, the, sure. People, the ability people of... seem to be writing this. Go, go, go on. I don't want to duck. <laughs> it's the whole uh, Steam has the monopoly. They need some competition, and we're all looking for it to happen. And the idea of having like a service that allows you to say buy a game and then when you're done with it you can sell it back for a markdown and maybe buy more games uh with the virtual currency that you made uh steam doesn't let you do that with games specifically but they have trading cards so this is all a good idea and it is coming from brian fargo the person currently behind in exile or if you play uh any of the old fallout 1 fallout 2 the original wasteland wasteland 2 that was the very first name you saw when the credits rolled in. It's a game by Brian Fargo. It's that guy. Isn't yeah. he also behind Fig, so, or at least partially, along with the Double Fine folks? Yeah, uh, he also backed Fig, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, it is... It it does have a big name behind it. It's just that it's the whole uh, cryptocurrency thing isn't really all that different to the Steam wallet, except instead of uh, trading cards giving you Steam wallet funds... Uh, selling games back gives you fake cryptocurrency. Well, I mean, well, it's, 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 it's not it's not just that as well because part of the whole deal here is that they're using the blockchain to determine who owns what game. So there's this interesting whole distributed database aspect of it. I don't know if you when you boil it down, it seems to me that you're just saying you can sell your games for itchy and scratchy bucks. It's in. I, I think there, it's definitely a worthwhile challenge to at least attempt to create something resembling a secondary market for digital mm-hmm. goods these days. Because, I mean, re- really, you can't you can't like go to your electronics boutique or GameStop or what, whatever your local regional equivalent of that is, and like return a PC game anymore because it's just a Steam key in a box. So, and and people are always looking for cheap games, but. Is it going to turn into something where like, oh, well, the, the publisher gets a cut of every single resale to the point where they're getting like those one cent royalty checks after this game's been passed mm-hmm. around like a freaking roach? I don't know, man. It's one of those things you got to look back. Can anything take on Steam? Everyone's tried. The big guys have tried. We got our origins and stuff like that floating out there. And basically it's universal. Eat a bag of dicks. It's not Steam. We hate it. It's evil. But Steam's on Linux. We got that. And... I don't know, the cryptocurrency plate, that's interesting. The resell, the ability to resell might get some curious people. And it's also going to boil down to, uh, is it going to be, or there's like, it supports PC. What do you mean by that, Brad? So (laughs) that's definitely a thing. Uh, What do we get up next? Power Ruby. Um, they got another update. We've been covering these guys for a little while ever since Mr. I think it was Mr. Foxdog or the Sildat. One of those two guys. We, we, we got a couple of people in chat room who just give us games whenever they want us to play them, which is <laughs> always interesting. Anyways, this is, this is an update about, um, sort of the journey that these guys went on about how, Hey, it's a, it's a shooter, shoot em up, but we want to start adding narration and add our own twist to it. And they give a little progress. Um, but they also have a new um, they have a new patch out that comes with some story cutscenes, uh, rejiggered UI, some game balance stuff, a couple new levels, or um, rather a couple improved levels. So that's definitely a thing if you've been uh, checking these out and following it. And then you know maybe maybe you got some stuff you want to try out. Uh, then you you think they're sort of chomping at the bit though, don't you? Them, and I've said it previously on the show that it's almost like they don't want to remain permanently in early access until 
their game is starts looking outdated distance. Um, I'm really impressed with the amount of updates that they have managed to pump out. It's a unique game. It's the first time I've ever played a shmup that hurts my head because with most of that, I'll slip into the Rain Man mode and it's cool. It works. This has some weird bullshit mechanics that like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, you're going to force me to think and dodge things. Oh, uh, mm, I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, good on that team. Look forward to playing it. We'll probably end up reviewing it because it is currently on Steam, unlike Ukulele. Uh, well, Snap. ukulele is on Steam, technically, but it's not really, especially <laughs> if you're a one of those people that likes to play games on Macs. Uh, I feel for you, I do. Uh, but yeah, no, a uh, Mac user went to the Steam forums for ukulele and said, yo, uh, I'm getting an empty repo, it's a zero byte download, I can't play the game, what the hell's up with that? And Team 17, long, long after he reported this, like, almost a month, uh, said, hello, everyone. I'm sorry for the delay in getting back to you. The team are investigating this issue, and as soon as there is an update, we will inform you. Really? Took you a month to say that? Really? No, no, no. (laughs) It took them a month before somebody posted it on Reddit, and it blew up and got some attention, and they're like, oh, shit. Ah. Uh, Yeah, we've totes been working on that the whole time, and... um, Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah, well, team, uh, the thing with ukulele is ah. it's not exactly a cheap game. Sorry. Uh, nothing, it's nothing like, you know, spending 40 bucks on a game which doesn't work. That's great. Well, and that's the thing. Team 17 has kind of dropped the ball when it comes to their Linux support because they've released a couple games that have not worked particularly well or have had issues. Um, and I mean, they, they are just the publisher. But it does mm-hmm. start kind of reflect poorly on them. And it's a reminder that just because people do support Linux doesn't necessarily mean that it's good support for programming. Um, and yeah, we, we, we got to be critical of it. You can't just be, hey, you, you tossed us the Linux version. Yay, happy, happy, joy, joy. We, we, we got to demand more from our games. We got to demand more from mm-hmm. things that we fork over our hard-earned cash for. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in another thing, I think. Or was that mm-hmm. it? I don't remember. I don't Anyways, remember. Uh, for, I mean, if you're going to like pull a game for whatever reason, I think they should at least have the decency to remove SteamOS support from the main page because for a month now, the game, yeah, you could log into the beta and play that, but yeah. you weren't buying a beta version and it didn't say that on the main page. Dick move is all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So, so Dog Souls? Dog Souls, man. Vul- Vulpine? Is that what we're going to go for? Maybe. Vul- Vulpin? Yeah, like, yeah. like a fox. Vulpine? It's a, it's a charming action exploration game. We're talking about some new games hitting Steam. Inner World reclaimed by Polygon Foxes. And, all right, it, available early 2019. One of the main reasons I wanted to put this up here, because this shit is a year out, and they're, they're like, uh, come on, think about giving us money. We get a Kickstarter, and it's there and it's available. It runs the uh, equivalent Intel i5 Plus and all this business. None of that's terribly impressive, Pedro, because, listen, man, it looks like it's going to be a fun little game with a sword holding a knife in its face organ, but it also looks Mm -hmm. like there's a 99% chance that it's going to be executed really badly, and it's not going to be fun. No, no, and that's okay. They're very clearly playing for the uh, because anyone who's played Dark Souls uh, remembers the boss with the big puppy that has a big sword in its mouth, and anyone who played Dark Souls too also remembers the boss. It's a big puppy that's got a sword in his mouth. Okay, they're not very original, and uh, these guys they decided you know procedural map generation throw you onto an island. You get to uh, try and defeat the bosses with the different types of animals that you can choose. It. I, I totally agree with you. It sounds like a great idea. And it's going to look well. It's going to be not very good, most likely. And I hope, hope they will uh, get around to improving the graphics because that's not cell shading. That's just not having any textures. Hey man, that's I mean, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic choice. I honestly, I think it looks fine. But I mean, yeah, promises, promises. We got, we got it. We are a year <laughs> out before hearing anything about this game unless they're gonna say hey we got we got some early access if you guys want to check it out 
quite possibly, knows, but maybe, I mean, it doesn't maybe, remind maybe, you maybe it would be like be um, if uh, Fox McCloud didn't get his legs chopped off. Yeah. Still, he'd still, he'd still need to find some way to do a barrel roll. I don't know. I, I, I like, I sort of like the fiction where it's like animals and reclaiming the world lost from humans. I don't know. I'd maybe, maybe just cause I liked Redwall growing up. I don't freaking know. It's definitely a thing. Ho- hopefully, hopefully this won't actually suck. Cause it looks like something I would play. Hmm. Could um, be a thing. But it's, it's t- sp- speaking of popos, we were talking about popos in the pre pre super shows. And you should check that out at Patreon. Now, now is not the chilling section. This is half life blue shift source there's too many colons in that game title but this is a half-life 2 mod they're aiming to recreate the uh, blue shift expansion kit pack to the original half-life um where you play as uh everyone's favorite security guard was barney walker in a very very short i think it was like six level campaign that explains what happened to barney and why he shows up in half-life 2 so I mean, it's it's there. You can install it. Requires like the Source SDK, um, uh, base twenty thirteen single player. That's the one. And I mean, I mean, honestly, I I was of the opinion that Blue Shift was the weakest of the Half Life expansions. I kind of want a nice Black Mesa style like opposing force. Mm-hmm. That would be good because uh, force was the shit. Uh, uh, the the thing about opposing force for me uh, was the reason I actually preferred Blue Shift over opposing force was the whole squad management. thing thing and how literally boned you were if the bone dead ai would uh run in front of a turret like they were off to do for some reason that was really annoying and it made some parts of the game very 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 frustrating but uh, i'm pretty sure the guy's name was barney calhoun not walker whatever <laughs> no Bar- barney walker's the nostalgia critics dad whatever mm. i don't fucking know shit <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 could, it could be barney the dinosaur for all i care in fact someone make that mod i want barney fighting head crabs <laughs> with love and hugs all right that's the thing i never got into blue shift and when i mean that i launched it and i was like god that works we're never going to get around to that uh billions of years ago in the future's past we used to play zeddy q2 light and i'm not making that name up it was a dragon ball z mod using the quake 3 engine and uh, you yep. go pew pew and bang bang. Turns out, unbeknownst at least to me, there was a mod for Half Life that uh, kind of helps reproduce some of that love. Yeah, it pretty it pretty much does the same thing with their special forces. They got a they got a one they got a one point oh they got uh, the one point two three stable. Um, yeah, if, if you, I mean, this is basically because uh, Xenoverse was done on Real Engine three. Dragon Ball's Fighter Z, which is the new uh, Guilty Gear style Dragon Ball Z fighting game, uh, is Unreal mm-hmm. Engine 4. And regardless of all that, we're never going to see a Linux version. So this is all we're going to get. Got to play ZQ or Earth Special Forces uh, to get that Dragon Ball love on the Linux. Um, and you I, may I want to play it like right now. You may want to play it right now because when Namkai Bando's lawyers, remember that one, uh, get a hold of this, well, it won't be around for long. <laughs> it's the internet, man. Everything stays forever. It's like, oh, a- a- ASMR2 got like next. You can still find that shit online. Well, man, uh, you, you, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> right. That's the thing. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to play around with it mainly because like, it looks worse than Zeddy 2Q. Uh, but mm-hmm. okay. One last thing before we get out of here. Uh, Hitchhikers, man. Yeah. Well, it's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Titanic. Good on you, Jordan, for coming up with that title. Or was it you, Ven? One of you. Yes. Uh, But yeah, it's the Starship Titanic. Uh, You may remember this if you were into adventure games back in 1998. Nope. This was around back then, and it's on Steam now, available for your Linux enjoyment pleasure. Man, this looks like some ship made in hypercard. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is a very old game uh, but yeah when i realized that it was a very old game i got kind of curious because I, I had a look at the current uh system requirements and it says it's a two gigahertz processor for the recommended one gig of ram uh 100 sdl2 compatible graphics card or onboard graphics uh two gigabytes of um free hard drive space and 
64-bit operating system, while the original game asked for a 133 MHz CPU, 16 megabytes of RAM, 160 megabytes of hard drive space, and a 16-bit operating system. Did they rebuild it in, like, Unreal Engine 4 or something? Uh, uh, no, they rebuilt it in Scum VM, so it's going to work on anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, apparently they made some fairly sizable overhauls. Probably a lot of the space is also from the HD images, because otherwise you get like these super crappy interlaced images that came with games way back when, so they could cram entire things on those 700 megabyte CDs, which remember at the time were just completely huge. You can, yeah, like now now, now you can literally get a 200 gigabyte SD card the size of my pinky nail, but. Storage used to be a concern way back when and long, long before. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't import your old save files, though. So um, that might be a deal breaker. But, I mean, seriously, dude, the game like chipped on a floppy or a CD drive. You, you don't have to back up oh. everything, you hoarder. <laughs> you awful, awful hoarder. <laughs> Anyways, you're, you, can, you can enable our hoarding. We're going to tell you a little bit more about that at the top of the next segment. Because coming up next is the news. And this is the point where I'd very much appreciate that we still had that 50-gallon uh, tank of lube lying around just because we're about to start uh, smearing it all over our bodies and selling ourselves to you. Because, hey, there's a lot of you out there, and you're watching right now, and we love you. Yes, uh, no? but okay. here, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> you don't get lube until you bleed. But all of you <laughs> lovely, lovely human beings who continually support us saying just awful, terrible things to one another. <laughs> this, is, this is straight up abusive. And yet you, you just tune in week after week to just watch the train wreck. And we, we love you for it. And you, you even help out with the, with the production of it. And we, we, we just can't keep thanking you enough. And if you want, if you want to be one of those crazy people who gives us money to produce more and more content, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support button you can click. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got Newegg affiliate links, Humble affiliate links, an Amazon wish list, Bitcoin addresses, PayPal buttons, and we even even got Pedro's face. We we've got it on a couple places on the website. It's, I mean, <laughs> don't look at that if you don't want to. I just recommend not looking at it. Period. But you know, it is what it is. You can also head on over to Patreon.com/slash LinuxGameCast where you can continually fund the development of this, whatever this is. Um, I mean, if you got a little extra cash around, help us out. It's great. Uh, you get you get some stuff for it. We got a bunch of contents mm -hmm. uh, that's exclusive to Patreon. You get uh, ac you get a couple weeks early access to release videos. You get the pre-pre-super chosen. That's awesome. You can hear us yes. have our little production meeting at the beginning of every week. And it, it's, it's, you can even, you can even, influence the show you can buy your way into the show or you can just give us stories and it's good stuff get access to the discord everyone loves it um but we also have uh the people who donate us hardware um through our amazon wish list we got we got to thank them is, 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 is did frank go to choir I, I see him in the little background there yeah. frank, frank yeah, decided to show up frank frank's uh, second out man he got... missed it last week but um fortunately the camera frank, frank's on a short leash man I know, man. Uh, uh, tell them about it. Uh, how, how does one go about doing that? Let me see if I can get the damn camera to focus. Yeah, you can. You can <laughs> buy us something from the Amazon wish list. You uh, get considered as a fine, upstanding cannibal. You even get to go on the fine, upstanding cannibal wall that Frank is a keeper of. You can be one of our fuck buddies. Um, then, then's gonna enumerate them very quickly. But we all, and you know, thanks to everyone who's actually shopping through our Amazon affiliate links because that, that's a really easy way to give us some money. And you get stuff. You get stuff, anyways, and it doesn't cost you anything. But we got uh, one more uh, person we got to thank this week: Thetargos, our brand new executive kid producer. He's in uh, Discord Ooh. right now. Uh, everyone, give him a round of applause, or don't do whatever you want. I'm not your mom, but he's he's awesome. He's given us that. Uh, he's given those those mad Ducats, and so we're gonna make him a nice little suit. Of okay, Thetargos that's flesh. brilliant. We love everyone. Thank you so much. You know you're awesome, and. Yeah, our little horse and buggy show. Thank you so much for supporting it. So we're we're done talking yeah. about Patreon. So let, let's get right into it. Talking about but, yeah, let's talk about Patreon. Uh, but uh, different Patreon. This one is actually closing down. It's flibbity by bows. Yeah. So Mr. Ethan Lee, sexy, sexy Ethan. Uh, he um, well, he made a very, very wordy post on Patreon d detailing exactly why he doesn't feel like Patreon is his cup of tea, so to speak. 
uh, he um, wasn't a big fan of the, well, the thing that Patreon did, and then they went back. Well, they didn't actually do anything, but uh, they went back, and he says that the what they did didn't really inspire them. Uh, didn't really inspire him with the confidence to rely on them to be a part of his business, which is porting games and you know getting paid for it. And if he can have some money uh, coming in regularly, he can do those ports for a an even smaller fee, which is good because it means more games come to Linux and more games run on FNA, which is awesome. Now that said, FNA is not going anywhere, so he made that very clear. He's still going to be working on FNA. But he's taking Patreon out of the equation. Yeah, some of the things, man. I mean, he kind of came up with his points with, you know, the hosting the donation system, working with numerous payment processors, gathering customer information for perks, um, actually doing all of this safely and securely, tracking and paying VAT and Moss. He's talking about his perfect system that he would like to see because he did say nobody at Patreon has received any sort of punishment whatsoever for what the company has done and he's talking about uh what patreon never actually did because they didn't do anything red they didn't and you know they actually they did one thing is they listened which is shocking and horrifying when you really think about it in any type of recent time you know jack jack's turned down more vc money than he's taken for that that whole reason. But Pedro, you had some thoughts though, right? Cause it seems like, well, you know, le legitimate concerns, man, you can't put all of your chainsaws in one basket, but yeah. And the fact that they didn't do it, isn't really stopping them from not trying to do it in the future, which is basically what uh, Flibbit's post boils down to. Um, they showed the world that they were willing to do it. And until a service, uh, like Patreon arises to be, you know, like Kickstarter, uh, Indiegogo is to ki Kickstarter. There needs to be a similar, similar enough service to Patreon that provides people with all of that that Flibbit listed. Basically, handling all of the paperwork and everything, so he only has to deal with one thing to get his his uh, recurring revenue, and that's that's great and. Okay, I will agree with you, Ven, on the whole uh, thing that they didn't actually do anything. And they did listen to the community and they took a step back when everyone kind of went apeshit. But there's really nothing stopping them from trying again. And that's the big issue. Here. Well, here's also the big issue. So, that's like throwing a hang on, man. I got I to get this out of my system while it's fresh. Um, <laughs> That's a fucking thought crime, man. Anybody, you could apply that to any service ever for. You know, something that just launched yesterday, you could use that exact same mm -hmm. logic. So, yeah, if you're going to be paranoid and terrified from that, no service is ever going to be 100% foolproof against that. Period. No. And to, to and to that to that point, uh, there's there's a guy on YouTube. We talked about him a little bit before when we were covering that whole Patreon debacle. Uh, Dan Olson, who's a Canadian content creator, uh, writes does a bunch of video essays on YouTube about the relationship between YouTube and the creators. And he actually raised a very interesting point when he was talking about something like Vid.me, where he states that these platforms, while they posit themselves as great ways to get income and enable you to get paid for your passion, they are not your friend. They are businesses. Um, Patreon mm -hmm. did back off from the change that they were going to be making, but as the regulatory eye of Sauron drifts closer and closer to them, they will eventually have to do something. Um, what that something will be, we don't know because they're, they, they clear, it was clearly realized that there was a huge fan and creator backlash to the original change they proposed. Um, mm -hmm. but as as, pa as Patreon deals with more and more money service as, as or more more and more payment processors and starts taking in more and more income, they're going to start being treated as a money service and they're going to need to adjust their business model in order to not get sued into oblivion. Now, of course, this could be construed, construed as an overreaction, but again, Flibbit, Flibbit's point does have merit. These platforms are not your friend, and if you feel that you cannot trust them, then it is on you as a business owner to say. This is a service that I'm engaging with. I don't feel comfortable engaging with them anymore. I'm going to go look elsewhere. And that that's fair. And if you're mm -hmm. going to have scruples, you might as well stick to them or else you're going to be like Pedro, a giant raging hypocrite. But, you know, that is what it is. I am. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, Epic 
kind of did a good guy epic thing, and that good guy epic thing was another round of grants to the tune of 200,000 wet, stinky caches, all for the recipients of uh, the Unreal Dev Grants, and this is not the first time. I mean, established in 2015, mm-hmm. they've granted over $5 million in development funds for Unreal Engine 4 titles, and that's really good. That makes me all the happy, because we're living in a time where Epic's doing this. You know, they're like, hey, man, people use our engine, even though people are already using Unreal Engine 4, maybe not to the tune that we see with Unity or anything like that, but they're busy trying to get studios and developers off the ground while Crytek's out suing people, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they they're they suing the people who made a bunch of money. Of- yeah, two two hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, grants that are giving it to a couple games who are probably never going to see it the next port. Uh, some uh, mobile Chinese <laughs> AR thing that is probably going to be extra dystopian because you know China and a movie. Um, apparently, uh, Gluco Aliar and the Legend of Markor. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Apparently, it's going to be in theaters somewhere. It's a Pakistani uh, film done entirely in Unreal Engine four. That is definitely a thing, but, you know, at least we'll be able to watch it on Linux. Well, I... yeah, watch it being the keyword there, because this is great, don't get me wrong, but I don't really see the incentive in, you know, developing cross-platform games. And by cross-platform, I mean ones that run on Linux. Please, is that too much to ask? Hey, man, we got a couple of Unreal Engine 4 titles. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a glowing example. <laughs> Even with Unity, we have, we have a couple of gems out there. Like, see, this oh, is yeah. what Unity Valley. can do if done correctly. Distance. Um, cigarette. Valley. Cigarette. Yes, Pedro, you didn't uh, break up the first time, but. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and, and Valley. So and also see. Valley. And two. Valley. Valley. Mm-hmm. Valley. <laughs> Bueller. Bueller. Uh, I, no, I, I, night. I, I say good on them. And hey, man, what's stopping them? It's not like. Uh, well, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do with an Unreal Engine 4 because get it over to Linux according to Valve and Steam because that's where Street Fighter V is, right? Or something? I don't know. And and, and, and Dra- Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Oh, yeah, also yeah, yeah. Unreal Engine 4. Yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd really like to see a Linux port of that. We need we need some, like, legit fighting games, guys. Oh, jeez. Hey, hey yeah. man, we, we got Skullgirls. Skull Girls is getting a bit old. <laughs> And, oh, we got, we got Kings of Kung Fu, another brilliant Unity title. Oh, man, they straight oh, up abandoned God. that damn thing. <laughs> anyway, from one game engine, doing some good stuff. And I know I was picking on CryEngine because I deserve it. But they're trying to show I mean, uh, Linux a little yep. love, man. They, they want you to meet they're, David. Meet David K, who is not the narrator of the Enzyme commercials, nor the voice of Megatron from Beast Wars. That is another David K. That's where I got confused when I first saw this. Anyways, uh, he is a um, build and release engineer, or as I call him, boner. I'm just going to keep calling them boner engineers for um, the foreseeable future, because that's that's literally what our build and release team is called at my work, the boner team. It's great. Um, they're doing a little interview with him. He's a lead system engineer. He was handling a lot of the... Um, Workflow automation stuff for CryEngine to allow them to more rapidly iterate. Uh, They're also working, uh, he's also, he talks a little bit about um, working on improving CMake and uh, porting uh, the builders to Linux so that, uh, or rather the bringing the resource compiler to Linux. Sorry. Um, That's apparently where he wants to move the project. So he ta- he talks a little bit about that. The article makes it seem like there's a lot more to do with Linux, but really that's that's the one question in there. Uh, it's good to see that CryEngine is making an effort, but at the same time, with stuff like Unreal and Godot and Unity and like 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 Ven says, even 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 Lightworks, CryEngine's not really <laughs> up at the top of anyone's list for game engines. I mean, unless you're an asset flipper, at which point there are more asset flips using uh, CryEngine than there are using Leadworks. So can, you that that right? like... <laughs> yeah. can you back yeah. that up? Yeah. Can you back that up? Go to Jim Sterling's channel. Jim Sterling's channel. Just find a. Just search for Crytek. That's fine. <laughs> 
I don't know. Part of me kind of wishes or hopes that maybe this is something to do with Lumberyard and Amazon's uh, partnership with Crytek. I don't know. But it does kind of uh, come across. I gotta say, this is the Hail Mary, the last ditch efforts. Let's go. We're even trying to support Linux because the claim to fame with Crytek, the one game we had, what was it called? Snow. 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 Yeah. yeah, it technically launched, but it also technically could hard lock your box, which was kind of um <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you gotta love that 720p locked at 30 FPS though. That's, that's oh yeah, that, that was next level. But you know, it is interesting <laughs> with Crytek because uh, Star Citizen, you know, I'll put the gauntlet down. It's like yeah, yeah. As soon as they get that open jail render, they got an open jail render for Linux up and working. Like uh, mm, field goal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll work on it after release. Um, we'll see, uh, ladies and, and gentlemen. And now Crytek is suing uh, Robert Space Industries for the, uh, you know, yeah. changing to Lumberyard. I'm going to be watching um, Leonard French. I back you on Patreon. Come check it out. Mm-hmm. I watch the show. Uh, I just made that up. He probably doesn't. Star Citizen, Citizen, definitely not the only thing not coming to Linux. Well, they, they didn't say it's not coming. They say it's maybe coming post-release. It's Battletech. It's that mech game uh, developed by, well, kickstarted by uh, Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, you may know them as the people behind the Shadowrun series. And there was another game, which I cannot remember for the life of me right now, but they're the ones. And, well, the they put out a little update to their Kickstarter, as is tradition. And... They say in a little bit, with the release in sight in the next few months, we want to tell you about a few features that were part of our Kickstarter campaign, but need to be delivered post-launch in order to focus development and testing as we move towards release. Number one on that list, Linux fucking support. So you can expect that if this piece of shit does come out, uh, it will run like ass. Good job. I don't know. Are, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are, aren't we supposed to show them... Uh love because they've made good on all their other ports jordan i mean that's the thing it's unfortunate and i mean you you okay so here, here's the thing i like the shadow run games on linux they the the thing with that though is they're made in unity which means that you can click export and you will have something workable and the shadow run games are actually decent performing under linux uh dragonfall returns and even, mm-hmm. even even Boston Lockdown, which sounds like which I still maintain sounds like some sort of weird kinky sex move, um, all run really well under the Linuxes. Uh, and uh, it, I mean, Hairbrain Studios deserves credit for that because they they've, they've made good um, with those things. However, I think I think it behooves us to uh, sort of be be on not not fully open. We need we need to we need to. I'm trying to think of the word here. We need to be cautious. We need to be cautiously optimistic because we've been burned in the past. There have been so many games uh, that have promised Linux versions post-release that Mm -hmm. have never delivered. And, you know, you got Larian, the guys behind Divinity Original Sin, who actually delivered some years later and then completely dropped everything for Original Sin 2. Um, And then we uh, and we we have uh, we have people like uh, Al or Alboy who release Parallel. You, you never really know until it happens. And I don't think, I think we should take a step back and say, listen, harebrained, you need to make good on your word. You've done us, you've done right by us in the past, but that doesn't automatically give you a pass if you do crappy things like this. And of course, if you go into the comment thread, it's all a bunch of freaking whiny Windows users going, well, so the Linux version shouldn't, um, shouldn't impact the Windows version because those were the people who actually funded the game. Here, here's the thing though. We've been screaming it for years. If you're going to use a cross-platform development tool to produce your game, just develop it with all platforms in parallel in mind. Um, this they, is they true. And end, but, well, one of yeah. the things I definitely want to scream out there, I mean, anybody, because I don't like the fact that this was launched and with the original crowdfunding, it's like, yeah, it's going to be on Linux. It didn't say it's going to be on Linux. Fucking asterisks. You know, mm-hmm. now Linux has been moved into basically a feature so go like, oh, yeah it's something we're going to work on down the road so i'm just going to say this anybody defending this can go right the fuck out and play in traffic hmm. 
This is the reason I stopped backing games on Kickstarter in the first place. It's because of this exact bullshit. The three games I backed, one of them delivered like two years later. It was uh, Divinity Original Sin. That was it. Hmm. The other two, I'm burning for that money. So, yeah, no, fuck this. Hey, man, uh, speaking of the reason I quit backing shit on Kickstarter, Carmageddon Reincarnation. That was one of them, yes. Yep. <laughs> they, they still have my 15 wet sneaky caches, but they had an update, and I always get excited when uh, I see an update for just because I know we get to slag them off on the show because they sure as fuck mm-hmm. are not going to release that Linux version, but Max Damage DRM free version is out now on GOG. I did redeem it just out of spite. Um reasonably easy to do so carmageddon way back in the day uh in the 90s man it was dos game i shit you not these guys stainless they came back they did a kickstarter first stretch goal was linux support they hit it and mm-hmm. you know bob's your uncle after that when i say uh after that i'm talking five five years after this thing was funded not just with kickstarter with another million, what was it, $2 million somewhere in there of additional funding by uh, investors or however you want to look at that, and publishers, I guess I should say. No Linux, no Mac support, uh, no physical fucking rewards, period, from the Kickstarter project. And, you know, I'm guessing that they just farted out the DRM free copy because they ran out of money again. That really seems like it's legit because, uh, hey, man, uh, you stainless, you've released so much unasked for bullshit, like the mobile versions and all this that yeah, nobody right, asked yeah. for. And you were selling them the entire time without fulfilling those physical rewards. And those things were hella expensive five years later. And you're like, oh, guys, like next week, next week, we're, we're going to start. No, you're not. Fuck off. And. I guess we should focus on the good. The good. Let's look at the good things because the reincarnation Kickstarter is the sole reason that Linux Gamecast Weekly implemented no Linux as a stretch goal policy. Yeah, you fucked it up for everyone else, man. That's right, other Kickstarters. Um, You can thank Stainless for that. But, Jordan, do do you think I'm off base when I say this? I do believe that this project, not solely... But this project and this continue bullshit from the developers, uh, they really helped uh, thousands, thousands of Linux users, Linux gamers, recalibrate their bullshit detector. I mean, maybe. You, you, that, that, that's the thing. I, I, I see too many hopeless optimists in forums all over the place. Really, I just think... Um, how how flippantly uh, we were dismissed, just we as a community, I don't give a shit about Carmageddon because I don't back it, but as, as Linux users got dismissed by Carmageddon, uh, by stainless games, it's like, yeah, we, we do penguins. <laughs> penguins exploding. We're, we're clever, you guys. <laughs> we took your money and we're just going to fucking... <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, but the thing here, uh, the big kicker for this one, is that they actually replied to a disgruntled Linux user. Um... To, on the uh, the comments for this update. Thanks, Empty, for bringing that up. Uh, they say, Today we have finally, re- finally released a DRM-free version, one of the many rewards promised in our Kickstarter campaign. We mentioned that the physical rewards are also still in the pipeline more than half a decade later, motherfuckers. Uh, but we didn't say anything about the Mac and Linux versions. We are still planning on releasing on both Mac and Linux in the future. However, we do not have a timeline for release, so please accept our apologies, fuck you, for the continual delay, but we have not forgotten. Of course you fucking didn't. As Jordan mentioned, you released a video where you said you did fucking penguins and you ran them over. Yeah, it's real subtle, motherfuckers. This is true, man. Listen, I'd really like to call the development team at Stainless Scam Artist, but you know what? That'd be a put down to fucking scam artist. You know, what I think's more accurate is like a bunch of greed driven, incompetent ass banjos. That seems like a better fit because you guys can't cut it in 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015. You shit, you shit developers. Okay. It goes on. It does. It does. <laughs> Hey, it, you know, Pedro, it's probably a good thing none of us went out and bought a Switch recently. 
Oh, it made oh, me so mad. It makes my camera blur. Oh, oh man, this is this is a Yuzu. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Nintendo Switch emulator. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I feel I feel super confident in my purchase. No, I mean, I mean, I, I can I can still I can still feel confident in my purchase for at least another couple months because at the moment, um, this piece of software it's available on GitHub. Links to all that in our show notes. Uh, only is capable of running homebrew software. Now, in principle, a Shield emulator for or at least hardware emulation for the Switch already exists because you need an ARM emulator, you need Vulkan compatible GPU. ARM emulations existed since 2010, and it's Vulkan the Shield tablet. If you have a video, yeah. If oh yeah, yeah, like like I accidentally I accidentally just called it a Shield tablet before I corrected myself to a Switch. <laughs> yep. Well, 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 welcome to last week, Pedro. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> The, the, this is pretty neat because um, people, you you can play your Batwas, you can play your Disgaea Fives or whatever emulated on a Switch. Uh, you don't get a lot of the motion control stuff and some of the more interesting hardware features of the Switch. But at the very least, I get to play with cardboard boxes, you guys, and you don't because you didn't pay money. You can pay five hundred dollars. You got to be realistic about that cardboard box cardboard. shit, man. Exactly, one person in your circle of friends is going to buy that, and everyone else is going to copy it, reproduce it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's called it's called a stencil yeah that's uh, 100 yeah. percent. um hey man yeah i'm looking at this the switch thing doesn't like blow my mind terribly interest me but if they go full metal ps3 emulator on this yeah this thing would be running all the native games in like like two minutes ago so mm-hmm. and yeah they got to figure out the switch stuff but like Pedro said yeah it's an NVIDIA issue. This is not unknown hardware. We're not in uncharted territory here. So... No, this is a, uh, a Tegra. It's a Tegra what have you that didn't actually release the full spec. But it is shaped like a tablet. It has a touchscreen. Uh, it has controllers that you can dock and remove. Uh, it is basically a shield tablet. Uh, and NVIDIA just said to Nintendo, it's like, yo, we made a gaming tablet. We too can do gaming consoles. And if you're looking to do a portable one, here you go. And Nintendo went, eh, why not? <laughs> well, yeah, dr- drinking a bit of AMD's milkshake <laughs> on that one. AMD's like, milkshake. AMD show, title. show title. Show yeah. title. So you were uh, kind of excited about turn-based tactics and RPGs, man. That's like a nope sandwich for old men, Ben. I know, and I'll, I'll take a giant-ass bite out of that sandwich. Mm-mm, tastes like shit. Uh, no, this is uh, Depth of Extinction. It's on itch. Um, it is a uh, turn-based strategy game taking place underwater. Um, it has uh, It's a roguelike. It has permadeath, uh, mission-based gameplay, I mean, the pixel art looks all right. To be perfectly honest, I don't. I don't really have a problem with it. Um, oh god, it's so much wub. It makes That's my ears loud. bleed. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Uh, Turn based, actual <laughs> grid based shit is is my crack. I love it. I will sit and play it for literally hours on end. Uh, Seventeen bucks. Mm-hmm. Is oh oh look 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 at look at that uh, look at that advocacy quote from uh, our, our good friend from that one website we don't talk about. Um, no, but 20, 20 bucks is a little steep for this. Um, I mean, I'm 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 half tempted to pick it up just because it it looks good, it looks fun. I like the aesthetic, I like the setting, and I like being able to just smash my head against procedurally generated tactics games that I, I get stuck on in Dungeons and Disgaea for literally weeks. And yeah, uh, it's, uh, apparently it's going to be reason... releasing uh, in. But sorry, it's going to be releasing in spring of 2018, apparently. So that you're just getting the early access for now. So again, kind of, kind of going to hold off on that. Maybe, maybe it'll drop in price. Ooh, a you better bit. act now, son, uh, uh, because uh, there's only 43 it's remaining. It's not early access. There, there, dude, yeah, there, there's it's not early access. 43, it's Pedro. Pedro, access. Pedro, 43 <laughs> remaining. At the digital good. It's going to run out. There, there's a yeah, there's no, a limited they, number they of, bits of bits. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I mean, no, it's listen, about. Uh, it, it, it was it, actually it the reason I added costs. this to the show notes was exactly because of the first access thing. Because it's like, oh, first access. What's this on itch? Uh, is it like early access where you get to back the game while it's in development? No. Well, sorta. But it's limited run, and apparently it's only limited as far as 
you want it to be because they're already doing first access round three. So I guess so much for that limitation mm. when money is involved. <laughs> Why now? All right, take, get us the hell out of here, man. All right, coming up next, I want to get away. I want to fly away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in, it's inner space. I could have made a I could have made a Robert Picardo uh, as a cowboy joke. I guess I'll have to save that for the opener. You fail. Once upon a time, I actually met. Uh, ah, shit. But once upon a time, as I struggle and scramble, I met Robert Picardo, and I asked him about um, being a cowboy in that movie, Inner Space. And he laughed at me, and then that was the end of that conversation. It was good times. This is this is Inner Space. We're throwing some chairs at it. It's from uh, Poly Knight Games. Aspire published it and gave us some keys. Good on them for that. It's done on Unity. You can pick it up for around 20 of your local particular currency. What is it? Inner Space is an exploration flying game set in the inverse, a world of inside-out planets with no horizons. Soar through ancient skis and abandoned oceans to discover the lost history of this fading realm where gons wander. Your greatest journey is within, as I said before, Aspire, send us some keys for this. So thank you for that. I forget what your name is. It's in the email. It's a thing. So this is Chair Q edition. This is where we talk about video games for a little bit. We pick one. We play it. We uh, have a little roundtable discussion. Give it a little bit of QA. See if we can break it, find some stuff that their QA department maybe should have found before they released it into the wild. And we give it a final score based on the chair acquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means it's pretty good. Four chairs means it's awesome. And we apply these to our categories of doom. Make us with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, Pedro, since this is your first time back on the next game cast, since you got deported and then reported, did it make with the working? Yeah, all the ports, the wrong ports, unfortunately. No, uh, the game actually worked fine over here on the Ryzen 5 1600 uh, with the GTX 1080 on Ubuntu 1604 because I'm still running 1604 because it's still working. Go figure. Uh, no, the game had absolutely no issues, uh, at least uh, mixed with the working wise. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it can get the four. All right. Um, over here on Humbuntu seventeen ten dot whatever it is this week, Curdle four fourteen dot whatever it is this week. Um, yeah, man, everything worked. Nine eighty played it at thirty eight forty by twenty one sixty solid sixty. Tried it at ten eighty, same effect. Uh, really, the only complaint I can't dig into chair for this is the fuck is this game doing? Like at the initial load because I, I cracked open H top. And look, it's like, you're not doing anything. You're just making me wait on a loading screen. I, I don't get it, Brad. It's thing. But yeah, man, I'll give it a solid four. Straight up. Yeah, I know that, that initial loading time is a little weird on uh, Fedora 2664-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 980. But uh, once you get in the game, at least at least with the NVMe drive, the game remembers, oh, hey, I got really fast storage. And then it just loads instantly. Pro Bonus points, because they actually give you something to do during the loading screen which I wish more games would do just mm -hmm. because <laughs> you get to play nice. with balls in the loading screen. <laughs> yeah, Listen, I love playing with balls. You can quote me on that. No problems. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's the thing to do. So yeah, I'll give it four chairs and that's four chairs for mix with the working. How about the shiny and the sounds, Ven? what do you think? Hey man, uh, I think something you noticed on the live stream that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's a Patreon goal that we have. Thanks everyone for supporting that. Oh, shameless plug. Uh, so much pop in, man. I, I mean, it can make finding the relics a bit difficult, but the pop in didn't bother me as much as the complete lack of options for anti-leasing. They're not there. They don't exist. Oh yeah. And uh, mm. Pedro will talk about that normally because listen, I don't, I, I don't bitch about anti-lacing, but it's just a damn shame to see something that's like kind of pretty be all jaggy. Uh, what are you looking at? You're lo looking at video audio listeners. Basically, uh, if you like pastel colors, this is the game for you. I think Jill was even talking about certain games that have that uh, color scheme. This is mm -hmm. one of them. If you've ever played a Mario Zelda game from the N64 era with an HD texture pack, that's kind of what you're going to be getting a whole lot of that. Um, very influenced, I think by Zelda, even that first, uh, 
like airframe, the wing kit you get. It's like, that's very Triforce mm -hmm. looking thing. Um, it's pretty. I like the music. Completely inoffensive music. Not something I would jam out to, but didn't cost me to put on Slayer, man. I, I threw a solid three in its direction. Oh yeah, for sure. It's very, it's very pretty, yeah. and I do like how the visuals and sound design really do mesh together. Like the, they actually put some thought into it, because like when you when you uh, rotate, you get a little piano noodling, and it, try as I might, I couldn't get it to go off beat. So good on them for that. That's a nice little touch. Um, yeah, the there there's some issues. The I mean, the anti-aliasing didn't really bother me because I'm playing it at UHD. So I mean, shit, that's. It, it is what it is. I, if I can make out Jaggies, then somehow I've developed telescopic vision. Um, the texture popping, though, 100% is a thing. Yeah, uh, when, when you mentioned Zelda, then, I kind of agree. There's, I guess Skyward Sword uses a similar sort of soft pastel -y color palette. So there's definitely some influence there. And there's a lot of, like, blue-orange contrasts. Well, even which, down to, like, the um, text menu and the noise it makes when the text is coming across, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the little chime. I I could I can definitely see that. I will say though that like some love was put into this game and how it looks and how it sounds and how that all uh, integrates with the environments and the gameplay. I think they did a really swell job. I'll give it three cheers. Yeah, uh, well, I have absolutely no issues with the visuals outside of the obvious lack of anti-aliasing because I have 1080p screens. And at that resolution, yeah, those jaggies are very, very noticeable to the point where I went to the NVIDIA settings and added a rule to force as high as possible uh, anti-aliasing as I could through the drivers. But it seems like someone got some pre-built AA assets uh, from the Unity store that doesn't really take OpenGL hooks into consideration. So the menu would be anti-aliased, but the actual game models wouldn't be. So that was a little bit annoying. And for a game with such a smooth color, color palette, seeing aliased everything, is, it's a bit jarring. Uh, the sound effects, they were very good. Uh, like, um, was it Jordan mentioned it? Uh, the Like, everything you do has a little chime or a little tune that accompanies it. The sound effects were very good. The music, I had to kill it because at one point it sounded like someone was stepping on a cat's tail uh, and then they ran that through a MIDI converter and then played the result through a th uh, synthesizer. A lot of thuzz in that sentence. Um, and that really bugged me. And when a game forces me to mute its soundtrack, it's not looking at a very good score. So two chairs. Uh, All right, well, I mean, P P Pitra's lack of taste with none notwithstanding. It's two chairs for uh, the shiny and the sounds. Um, how about the controls? Because this this is where this game, I feel, kind of falls apart a little bit. Tell me about it. What, what, what? All right, well, uh, number one, damn you inverted controls. You can see this in, the, in my <laughs> Thursday playthrough of this. But at one point, I get fed up with the inverted controls <laughs> and switch it to just regular controls. And then I realize that my muscle memory has adapted to inverted controls. So I had to switch it back. I don't know, man. I, I, I was watching works. you do that stream and you're like, oh, inverted controls. Like, yeah, that's how all flight games should be. Is like, he going to change him back? Oh, God, he's going to change him to the... Derptastic. Like, l l listen, I, I understand that if you're playing a flying, fly flying game, you should be using inverted controls. I understand that. That's how airplanes work. I wanted to try it out for the sake of, and we'll talk about this more in the fun section, crashing into everything repeatedly. That said, everything worked <laughs> fine on the DualShock 4, which is uh, something that can't be say said for uh, every single game. Uh, everything was mapped out really sa well, relatively sanely anyways. The, the steering is a little weird, but that's just because, I guess, for me, I'm just not experienced with, like, flight sim games and anything like that. Um, Ven's going to talk about the camera, and I will say that there it is kind of annoying that the only way you can kind of really get your bearings is by finding one of those perches. But other than that, it, everything was relatively solid. I'd give it three chairs. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely another way you can go about that is something I didn't see you take advantage of is the slingshot mechanic where you can kind of spin around backwards and take a look and launch yourself back. It's um upper left bumper button. It kind of worked out of the box over here with the steam controller, but uh, 
Pedro is going to talk about this later, uh, and he's kind of right. You definitely need to change your areola control or your steamy business to the twin stick mm-hmm. config because that'll just make life tolerable. But that said, man, these controls, yeah, they're, they're a bit dog shit. Well, I guess I should say the camera controls or the complete fucking lack of camera controls are, in fact, dog shit. Um, first time I think I've ever wanted a point of view slider. That that would be nice. That would be ha- very handy because, you know, just closing this out, the controls, yeah, man, you know, they work, but the complete lack of options to actually give you some control over what they're doing outside of being rebindable. That's why you don't, you know, get one chair, but yeah, they're, they're just bad. It's just a bad control scheme. It's even more stupid. If you try attempt, <laughs> nay dare to try to play this with a keyboard and gerbil. Cause you gotta, you gotta use your gerbil <laughs> buttons, like rotate it. You can't do any movement with a ger- It's just fucked. I'd say try it on a dare only. But I'll throw two in its direction. Mm-hmm. Pedro, round this out. Yeah, no, the controls would be totally fine if it weren't for that fact that the uh, right areola, by default, is mapped to a mouse-like joystick configuration. And this is exactly why Steam uh, or Valve gave the option for developers to set a preferred uh, control scheme for their games really you can if you're a developer you can actually set a little option when you publish the game that says if players have a steam controller you pick either mouse um mouse like joystick a uh, regular gamepad uh, gamepad with improved camera control or uh the twin stick that Ven mentioned it works fine in the twin stick and the uh regular gamepad um mode but if you if you try to play this with the mouse like because at that point the right areola acts like a touchpad and that is just horrible no no don't do that and by default i didn't mean to do that but yeah there it goes <laughs> uh i would like the option to not have to get out of the game go into big picture mode change the controller config and then play the game that's kind of annoying so it gets three chairs because it's more of an annoyance. It's not really missing functionality. It's just missing something. Not right. You don't have to go into big picture mode to adjust, to adjust the Steam controller stuff, but that's... Uh, oh, yeah, they have that That now. is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah they, 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 it, it's, it's, a little, it's a little fucky. I've complained about it before. Anyways, that's two chairs for the controls. Let's put a bow on it for fun. Ven, did you have fun? Hey, man, do you know what would make this game a bit more engaging? For me, at least, I'm going to say this. Uh, one word. Damage. Yeah. Because until that happens, uh, for me, personally, it's bounce off shit until you re- reach your destination simulator 2018. You know, mm-hmm. I, I have, there's no reason not to go, all right, I'm, I'm going to aim in this direction and smash into shit my way there until I end up getting there. Um Outside of that, I'm, I'm going to hit it for the menus. Menus is really bad, not really usable with a keyboard or a gerbil, but all right, that's the thing. Also, no option to back out of conversations once they start. You got to go through the whole damn mm. thing. And sometimes the um, fish sub wants to read off like an encyclopedia to you, <laughs> and that can really tie it up. I don't know, man. I think maybe this might make for a fun mobile or like VR gear experience, but at nineteen ninety nine, what stinky cash is? That's a hard sell for what basically amounts to a fuck around simulator, even though it is particularly pretty. So, yeah, man, at twenty bucks, they say you could power through this in like three or four hours. Um, I tried. I really enjoyed the visuals of it. The audio didn't bother me. The concept's neat, but th- there's nothing there that kept me engaged after, say, 30 minutes. And it's was like, all, all right, more of the same, more of the same. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but I will say the reviews on the Steam page, pretty legit, reasonably accurate. Mm-hmm. Jordan? Oh, I was going to pass it off to Pedro, but, you know, sure, why not? 
Let's go old school. Yeah, I, I really got to agree with you on the on the damage thing. Because um, otherwise, the only thing that really encourages you to get better at any of the flying is just the annoyance of smashing into things. In the in the sun level, like the where you got Mr. Marionette dude, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple places where you got to mm -hmm. go look. Where if you are not spot on with your maneuvering, you just you got to be like a pong master or something. Because otherwise, you're not going anywhere. Um, the the upgrade system. So here, here here's the thing. I feel this game would be a lot better if they actually took some time to explain some things to you. Because the upgrade system is kind of unclear. You can unlock different glider types. You can get some mods for it, but it's not clear what's on and what isn't and what's required. Um. I find that sometimes it's a little unclear when the game asks you to do something to advance the plot. They're like, oh yeah, something will be in that direction. Just go engage with it. And I can understand. I guess it's kind of fun to, you know, fuck around and experiment until you um what until you find what you need to do to progress. To like finding switches and hitting them, which I thought were just like antenna or whatnot. I didn't realize <laughs> you actually had to hit them. I was uh, for, screaming for at the live stream. <laughs> yeah that was that, that 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 did not there there were a couple moments where like that did not click and until i accidentally rammed it i'm like oh 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 but i mean that it, it that but that sort of thing pivots to being annoying eventually and while while, while i did complete the level and played a little little bit more of the one after that uh it just felt a, it could get a little frustrating just uh, like I, I'm not clear what I I, I want to play you game. You're you're interesting me. The story it's kind of interesting. I like the visuals. I'm I'm trying to get engaged here, and the game doesn't really help me all that much. Um, and I mean, while all the environments are super pretty and gorgeous and they're fun to explore, um, looking around repeatedly for wind and relics can get a little boring. And I I don't I don't know. I want to like this game, but there's a lot of stuff wrong with it. Um. There's there's some Japanese concept that states that like beauty is sort of inherent in like flaws like wabi sabi or something I don't know I'm probably gonna get called as racist for that whatever do it I don't care come fight me on the internet I'm like nine feet tall um, I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna give it two chairs it, it it needs it definitely needs some work that that's all I'm gonna say yeah for a game where you fly around uh, setting it inside a Spherical inverse world is somewhat counterintuitive. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I know the cave flyer genre is a thing, but this isn't it. Uh, the point here isn't to navigate difficult tight space to avoid death and reach the objective. As Ven and Jordan already mentioned, there is no damage, so you don't die. You really don't. The point here is to explore and find the relics, find the story of what happened to the worlds. Find the demigods, become the ultimate wind creature, and restore life to the world. Uh, the it's about beast. exploration, it's about movement, it's about enjoying the visuals, enjoying what you're looking at. And I've already said that movement is kind of a thing you take for granted in some games. But then you have the example of something like Valley, which took movement and made it awesome. It made the entire game about movement, and it felt great. Movement here, it just feels like you're flailing about for most of the time. Uh, it's You're literally stuck in sal uh, in, on the inside of a very small round sphere, and you just keep running into walls. And then they force you down a tight corridor, and you're going to smash into that wall. If their intention with this game was to induce claustrophobia, mission accomplished. If it was for anything else, yeah, no. Mm, I can't really give it a one chair because I can see that it's not a terrible game. It just, it needs more. So two is the best I can do. And that totals up to one chair for the fun segment. And gives us two chairs, List Rider for the inner space. Um, final thoughts. I think this, this is a nice game to like get stoned and chill out and kind of just derp around and, but I mean, you're, you're going to have a hard time selling it to people who are expecting it or are expecting to play it for hours on end. Quite possibly, it does some man. stuff, right? Yeah. It, it almost feels like it was a mobile game that got out of hand. May, maybe. The menus I, I, look like may, it. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it's Unity, so they're probably they're probably banking on this coming to mobile at some point. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with you about the the VR thing, just because like it's not that sort of game. 
But I mean, what kind of game is it really? Mm, yeah, that 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 that's the question. I don't know. Maybe if you yeah. can pick this up on Crazy Cell, because what I'm scared about recommending this in any way is if I wasn't reviewing this, this would have been five minutes of me fuck around simulator and peace out. Done. All right. Take us out. Uh, all right. Well, that, that, that's it, I guess. Coming up next, we talk about why we suck at Half-Life 2. And also, um, fuck YouTube. Yeah, we're just about ready to wrap this up, too. If you made it this long, I commend you. Well, I really don't. It's like, what are you doing with your life? But hey, if you'd like to shout at us how much you hate what we do to your life, even though the choice of watching us is totally yours, but whatever, you want to scream at us, go to latestgamecast.com, hit the contact button, Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little drop downy thing. Leave us your message. Leave us your hate mail. Leave us your feedback. Leave us hate thoughts, allegations, or things better left unsaid. But if you're trying, desperately trying to get someone to notice your game, make sure to include, at the very least, three copies or three Steam keys or three somethings or a build that we could share amongst all of us. Just let us play your game, because if we can't play your game, shit's not going to go well for you. Just I don't saying. know, man. First of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of LGC Weekly for everyone being held captive, forced to watch this. Um, LGC cares. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you watch know it, what you, you did. Dogs. Watch it. Why watch it hard? It'll be kind of brilliant. So, uh, coming up first, it, it, man. It's like that thing from Clockwork Orange. <laughs> coming up. Oh, uh, we, we, we got Freeman. We got Freeman from uh, Mr. Friendly Fun, or uh, Mr. From oh, what's his name? Shit, his name got cut off on the thing. Blank. From someone. Why I <laughs> a quicker way of restarting a map in Synergy is to use an in-game console command to switch level. E.g. map, whatever. In my experience, this method also seems more reliable than restarting the server when it comes to spawning key mission NPCs. Also, there's a secret command in Synergy which eliminates some of the problems that makes the mod more stable. Just enter this enter this command when you end when you start up a server. Turn on friendly fire. <laughs> Doodles! Uh, I think it was from yeah, Romlock. Yeah. yeah, we're talking about uh, mm -hmm. the Freeman. Meet the Freemans. We're going to be playing some of that in the after shows. And uh, we have ran into issues with spades last week with um, Synergy not spawning Alex and just being a dick mm -hmm. in general. So, yeah, man. Romlock, I do believe, was wrong. If I'm wrong, uh, I'll correct it next week. Thanks for the advice. Um, so I kind of co-opted some hate mail that we wanted to kind of addressed because I wanted to get uh, J Baby's uh, take yes. on it uh, from Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays and um, t tell me what you think about this rap, man. It's like, yo, were you guys affected by the new YouTube policies? We'll talk about that in a second. Will this finally spawn a real, com uh, real competitor for the YouTubes? Um, do you think it will have any type of chilling effect on Linux YouTubers? Well, first of all, um, we, we need to talk about what went on with YouTube because they kind of changed mm -hmm. their policy for monetization, Pedro. Yeah, the YouTube Partner Program now requires you to have... Well, they changed it recently. They I think they increased the number of subscribers and the amount of hours watched. But when I first got that email, because I have a YouTube channel that I haven't paid any attention to for years, and it was part of the YouTube Partner Program... Uh, so they sent me an email saying, yo, you don't have a thousand subscribers. You haven't had 4,000 hours of watched content over the past 12 months. So we're going to terminate your YouTube partnership. And I was like, oh, I was still a part of that. Okay, that's fine. But they also put in the caveat that uh, if you can make a thousand subscribers appear, uh, over the pa over the next 30 days and get them to watch at least 4,000 hours of your content, then we will not terminate your partnership. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing, I guess? Possibly, but it's, you know, they, they've altered the deal. And they've kind of rolled it back to closer to where it was originally when I went through the application process, which took like six months mm -hmm. before we were monetized. Then it seemed like later on, a couple of years later, they just opened it to everyone. So, 
you know, basically, you had, yeah, they, they checked you for a pulse and you could monetize things. I don't know <laughs> exactly why. Well, okay, I, I guess I do is because it because I have seen this with uh, YouTube channels that were just posting pirated shit, knowing the channel was going to get banned. And but you still get that check, though, even if they kill your channel. So that's yeah. the thing. Uh, did it affect us? No. Will it affect people getting into it? I hope not, because ultimately, we do, I, I, I don't think any of us consider ourselves YouTubers or anything like that. This is uh, where we store video for free, along with Twitch. Hi, 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 YouTube! Smash that, smash that like S button, smash no, that um... like button, fam. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, so. Go ahead. So, um, uh, the. I, I don't think there's necessarily going to be a chilling effect, right? Because it has to do with the, it's the YouTube partner program, which as the atomic acid mentions in discord. It's a lot more than monetization. And much like Vince said, there is rampant abuse of the system. Like the YouTube as, as an organizational system for hosting and monetizing videos is fundamentally broken. Uh, my favorite example of this in terms of like their monetization AI is someone posted a video in which they are fondling a green penis monster statue uncensored for about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. which was cleared for monetization, but an actual relationship <laughs> advice show was demonetized. The, this entire notion is mm -hmm. just so completely fucked up. I think YouTube is... They're they're trying somehow to stop bleeding money and by in by levying new requirements on who becomes a partner and who gets paid, they're attempting to do something. Is this a good idea? Honestly, I don't have the business analytics to make any realistic judgment about that. But it's it's it it seems like a lot of a lot of the people who are affected are a lot of the smaller creators who I don't think are necessarily relying on YouTube monetization for, um, for no. their income. Cause like what we like, I, I found out cause I'm like, oh, shit, does this affect us? Oh, we actually have 2000 subscribers. Do we have 4,000 hours of watch contact a month? I don't know. We post some five hour, five, six hour long videos. Well, that, so that's kind of the whole thing. When you, when you actually possible. look at it, this is one of the reasons why Patreon support. This is why we love our patrons so hard. Cause I pulled up our numbers. Yeah. So I was like, wait a minute. This, Cause this was the email, the bit of hate mail or feedback that is like, wait, what? What's this? I didn't even know this was going down. And yeah, just like in the middle of the month when I pulled the numbers, we had already had 93,000 minutes of viewed content mm -hmm. from our videos. How? That's low ball. It's usually well over 100, like I said, <laughs> in the middle of the month. Out Why of that, the with the 2,000 subscribers, I, man, I, we, we have five years worth of shit up there. All right, that's all I'm saying. And I did say shit. Uh, with that... With most of our stuff monetized now, because people have been feeding the bot, the copyright bot, good things. So I think we actually broke like $16 last month. So oh, that, that, shit. If I had a stack of money right now, I'd make it rain, but I don't. That's kind of was like, oh boy, we're just going to keep on rolling in this stuff. And in topics of the entire uh, partner program, I don't know outside of monetization what I've ever used the partner program for. Um, I don't know what that was, Pedro, but you did it. Good on you. Um, but you, you do have a point. It was just a 10 pound note. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, it was just, uh, to illustrate Jordan's making it rain. <laughs> That's all I got. I, 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 I have a quarter. I'm going to go do my laundry now. I get a shit around here. Um, no, uh, you got a point, Jordan. I mean, if you, because what they said is legit. I mean, if you're making, like, if you have less than 4,000 hours watched, whatever, views less than 1,000 subscribers or 2,000, whatever it is next week. And yeah, you're not making anything. So I think it was on Linus Tech Tips, because I cut the ass into that the other night when that comes on, I think Friday, is your time is better spent building an audience if you want to be on youtube to be a youtuber is to build your audience and when you're in that mode you don't want to be monetizing everything you want to be building your audience then later on worry about trying to monetize see i don't even like i don't even like those words sounds skeezy but 
that, that's yeah, the whole it, thing. It's, tr- it's turned yeah, a bunch of old... indie content creators into business and uh, entertainment moguls. And that the, the it's, it's it's a weird thing because we think of ourselves as I I, I mean I still think of it as just the stupid podcast I do every Saturday night for fun with my friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Who do you do this with? Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, there, there, yeah. there's Bill uh, and then there's yeah. Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Greg, of course. Yeah, they're in the other room. The but... only people this would actually oh, fucking Greg. The only oh, people this would actually affect yeah, are people coming into YouTube brand new wanting to monetize their stuff and chances are that content isn't going to be particularly great uh at that so um, i don't think we're losing much honestly <laughs> they're, they're, uh, it's youtube i mean ultimately at the end of the day what i took away from this is like breaking youtube did something else that's kind of boneheaded and stupid news at 11 water also wet Grass reportedly green. Um, <laughs> Wait, it's supposed to be green? Shit. Uh, in C- Canada, it's white. <laughs> That's racist. It is racist. Because <laughs> on that bombshell, you can only um, cue the music and catch us around 930 Eastern Time. When I am all here, hopefully I'll be all here next week. I, I've been juggling the bits and doing the things. Trying to make uh, something resembling a cohesive show. But uh, if you want to get in touch with me at Vinstone on the Twitters, uh, just Vinstone into Google's. I will at least read it. Sometimes I even get back to you. I'm Jordan Spunk. You can find me, insert blank here, at Burning Fool on Twitter, or insert blank number two here at plus Jordan Spunk on Google+. Plus. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me... On Google Plus as well, uh, plus Better Method. I haven't been posting much lately. Uh, I need to get back to that. I've actually been using Twitter a bit more, uh, though still nowhere near enough. But hey, I'm almost at 350 followers on Twitter, so uh, if you give me a follow and you post some interesting shit, I will follow you right back. How's that? That's unaccounted for. F-O-U-R. It, it's in the lower third there. So that's fine. Find me there, maybe. Um, what did we learn, Jordan? What, what we don't about? pee in the blood jacuzzi. Don't pee in the blood jacuzzi. Okay. I... Vinegar. Use vinegar. Vinegar. Ah, time for some credits. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was waiting for that. I had that plan since Monday. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh. Uh, it's terrifying. Spacetrions. Spacetrions, man. Space patrons. We love them. Spatreons. Atomic gas. Ooh, Barbara ooh, the targets. The targets. The, new one. <laughs> yes. the brand, brand new one. He's in Discord. Everyone go, I don't know, Discord him. <laughs> yes, arrest the Targos. Do it now. <laughs> it's the Targos grade from Star Trek Discovery. So that's the first... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing we be, want be, to do. Be, be to careful, do, do, new people. Do, don't don't inject your blood. <laughs> yeah, don't don't, don't inblo- inject your blood, his blood, in you, or else you might ha- your boyfriend might get his neck snapped. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> There's two sword. Linux Nerus. That's Gosh. like that's like <laughs> at least two too many Linux Nerus. <laughs> <laughs> Double complete Tanzania. Hey man, he picked us up some much needed items. Good on him. Yeah. Eat, eating up all the bandwidth in Tanzania. Five dudes.